All right, day 17. Uh, today I am going to hopefully finish up the brakes. Uh, we had that adventure last week in trying to flare those uh, 3 16 stainless lines. It didn't work out very well, so hopefully uh, go a little better this week. Uh, first thing I'm going to do this week is get this line here cut. Uh, I'm going to cut it and actually take this off. This has got a, a, a big, I don't know what size it is. I, I want to say it's like a, a 9 16 or 5 8 or something like that. It goes into the stock proportioning valve. Uh, this actually takes a uh, 3 8 it has two 3 8 in and three 3 8 out. So what I did is I went and bought a 3 8 to 7 16 adapter. So I'm going to take uh, one of the 7 16 uh, fittings from the quarter inch line off of them, some extra stuff that I'm not going to use, and put it on here. Reflare this shorter so I can attach it there. So this will all be buttoned up. Uh, these are plugs just in here right now for uh, to keep the dirt out. I uh, went ahead and took off the, uh, the Willwood... Uh, uh, brake light switch here. Uh, I thought this might be a low level switch, but it's actually a brake light switch uh, to use in lieu of your uh, uh, switch on the pedal. So I went ahead and took that off, put a plug in there. That's just a 1 8 inch NPT. Uh, then I can hook these lines up and be done up here. Um, down here, I went ahead and I've got some short lengths of uh, nickel copper line from the local parts department or parts store, or whatever. I'm going to cut them up and uh, uh, use these fittings here and that spring uh, make some new lines to the rear hopefully be done with that um, and hopefully be bleeding the brakes here today so i've got some fluid here i went ahead and went dot four just a little higher temperature uh, boiling point there so that's kind of the plan for today is to get it back so the brakes are functioning i don't know if it's going to happen or not <laughs> like everything else on this truck every time i uh, i say that i jinx myself so we'll just kind of see where it goes um, not much left to do on that front, so get that all sorted. Uh, we can actually probably get the bed on here pretty quick and get this thing back on the ground and uh, uh, running and driving. So I think the only thing, I got a long list of nitpicky stuff, but uh, I just got to make the exhaust work. I'm going to take the exhaust that came off of it from the leaf rear end and actually kind of cut it up and section it and uh, use the bits and pieces and make an exhaust that works with the trailing arm. So, But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get set up and uh, start uh, working on this front end here. All right, I changed my mind. I'm gonna start on the rear here. Um, I, basically what I've done so far is I cut the uh, both ends off of the uh, stainless line and used the fittings in the, uh, the stainless uh, spring here. And what I've done is I've just kind of uh, started run this line here. So I've got it set up here to kind of go around the uh, the U-bolt here. It's, it's similar to stock, but I didn't want to get too crazy with the bend in this stuff. I didn't want to kink it. So I got it running over and up and then actually I'm gonna flare that and put that right there. So. It actually works out pretty well. It looks uh, similar to stock. Uh, that line kind of comes up and has a bunch of crazy bends right here to go into this. And then and I was thinking, I actually turned it up putting this distribution uh, T on the bottom side of this bracket instead of putting spacers in here. And that actually helps me because it, it gets this line down away from the uh, shock bracket here. So that worked out well. So, and then I can use this thing, the, the stock shoulder bolt there. So. I'm gonna cut this thing to length, put a flare on that thing, and I think we're gonna be done with this one here, and we can move on to the driver's side. All right, so the brake line on the passenger side is done. Uh, I kinda learned on the fly here with this nickel copper. This Eastwood uh, flaring tool that I have, it actually, on the reverse flare, the second step of it, uses the same die for both the 3 16 and the quarter inch line, uh, which makes a pretty big uh, double flare on the, on the end of these nickel copper lines. Uh, I was also running into a problem on the first step when trying to put the bubble flare in the tube was collapsing on itself So I did oh, 10 or 12 different tries and I finally figured um, I didn't use the Eastwood uh, debearing tool at all. I ended up using a drill bit uh, to uh, chamfer the inside uh, and then just using some emery cloth on the outside to kind of just knock down the edge and just dip the end of it the end of the tube into grease and then uh, then did the uh, uh, procedures for both sides and that worked pretty good uh, the flare was still pretty big uh, like I say because that die is the same for quarter inch and three sixteenths but uh, it's in uh, a lot of head scratching uh, I call a buddy of mine and he he actually hadn't worked with this stuff he'd done some fuel lines but no brake lines so I got on the internet and I uh, didn't find anything so I was like you know what I'm just gonna try starting trying some things so it turns out that the grease was the key there and uh, using uh, just barely chamfering it uh, and it worked out pretty good so uh, driver, passenger side line is in. I'm gonna start working on the uh, driver's side right now. All right, the rear brake lines are done. Uh, with some fiddling, I finally got the uh, flaring tool to work. Uh, works perfect now. Just use uh, 
lots of grease so I may make a video on how to show uh, how to use that Eastwood flaring tool on this uh, 3 16 copper uh, line it uh, took some trial and error but I got it to work I'm actually gonna call Eastwood tomorrow and ask him about that because I should use the same die for both 3 16 and quarter inch on that reverse flare and it just seems a little big for the uh, for the 3 16 but it worked so they're in uh, they look pretty good. Uh, they don't look as good as those nice uh, stainless lines, but uh, put that stainless spring on there, uh, protective sling, spring that is. Everything looks good now. So now I'm going to go up to the front real quick, cut that uh, line off and flare it and we'll be done with the brakes. All right, finished up up here. I didn't film any of it because I was kind of on a roll. So uh, this line here, I ended up just taking uh, and just cutting it off straight and kind of just reconfiguring the bending a little bit here. It works out perfect with this. Um, everything looks good. Everything looks factory. Uh, the lines that were on here weren't, I don't think were factory. Somebody had uh, replaced them at some point. So this is how it's supposed to look. So that's kind of nice. So everything's in. So I'm going to actually take this back off so I can attach that to the pedal, uh, the booster that is, and uh, put the header back on, on this side because you got to take the whole razzmatazz off here. So this thing is, uh, it's got some sweet uh, long tube headers on it. So Put those back on it so I can actually start it. it. hadn't been started in a while. I've been kind of wanting to start it. So that's where we're at right now. So next up, I'm going to tear all this down and uh, um, just start putting things back together. So true to form, this thing's fighting me. Um, I went to put the headers on just because I needed to uh, check clearances and everything. And they don't even bolt on. So... This has got some sort of long tube headers on it. I don't know what brand they are. There's no tags or anything like that. Um, I don't know if they're even for a truck because they hang way low. So they're gonna they're gonna drag on speed bumps and everything else. So huh, they interfere with the lower shaft here, suspension of the lower control arm shaft, all the brake lines there. I figured they would a little bit, but they're really close on top of them. This side couldn't even get it on because the tube wants to go right where. Uh, the lower cross shaft is and this sticks out pretty far so my gut is to go get a set of uh, those ram horns or some cast manifolds of some sort and just put it on here and then fabric cockle some sort of uh, exhaust on here uh, this this engine and trans is not gonna be in here much longer but i'd like to drive it before the season's over so i just kind of wanted to get something in here so i can drive it but um i don't know this truck's fighting me again so Everything was going along smoothly. All the lines are done. Everything is done. Uh, everything in the back is buttoned up finally. Got all the lines on the axle. Everything in between is good to go. So I'm going to lower the truck down, kind of show you what I did up there. I run some uh, numbers on the uh, master cylinder, the uh, push rod length and whatnot. So I'm going to get the truck down on the ground and we'll go from there. All right, up here, I uh, pulled the master off. I just wanted to double check. I ran the numbers. I uh, just wanted to see what the depth of, of the, the push rod in the in the booster is uh, in relation to this flange here and where that lies in relation to the master. Uh, Willwood uh, tells you what that depth is on their end and I measured it and it checks out. Um, so it looks like we are right on the money as far as push rod links. Uh, it comes with a little pill that goes inside there and it is perfect. Um, so I'm gonna double check, I'm gonna read through the uh, got three different instruction sheets that came with that so I'm going to read through those and uh, make sure I'm um, understanding this all correctly so all the brake lines are done they're just kind of loose laying here right now I haven't tightened anything up yet uh, I've got to deal with this header situation now so uh, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and call it a day I'll come back up here and work on it later this week it's just kind of it's got me frustrated um, uh, I don't know it's how it goes sometimes I just feel like uh, it's two steps forward about eight back but that's it's how it goes, I suppose, when you're using lots and lots of aftermarket parts in an unknown power plant. So this thing can't be gone soon enough. Uh, I really want to drive this truck this year, and I don't really want to mess with an engine quite yet. So uh, I've got the one back there, but just it needs to be rebuilt. And I don't know, just my problem is time now. So uh, anyway, kind of a short video today. I apologize for that. Nothing exciting happened. Uh, the brake lines and whatnot, and that's about all I got. Seems to got done today. Um, but uh, I do appreciate everybody watching. Uh, please like and subscribe. And I promise that one of these days these videos will be interesting uh, once we get this thing back on the ground and whatnot. So I think I am going to try to put the bed back on this week. Um, I actually sold one of my cars, so I need to bring it up here and uh, uh, 
put a shop here so that it doesn't get uh, hurt sitting in my garage. Um, uh, the guy's not coming for a couple weeks to pick it up, so I need some room here. So I think I'm gonna put the bed back on it, um, which should be easy. Everything on the back end is done now. So, um, but anyway, that's all I got. Thanks for watching.